Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Allison Floyd. We have some breaking news to let you know about. A water spout off the shore of Myrtle Beach has now come ashore. Chief Meteorologist Ed Piotrowski joins us now live, and we are looking at a picture right now, Ed, of the funnel cloud that has come ashore. Absolutely. This is a full-fledged tornado now on the south end of the Strand. It's been hovering right over 2nd Avenue Pier here for the last 15 to 20 minutes or so. Folks, this is a very dangerous situation if you're on that part of the beach. We're talking winds in excess of 100 miles per hour easily with this particular system. We're not on the air right now simply because this thing went right over the pavilion. It's knocked out a lot of our power. A lot of our computers right now obviously are screaming. We have no data that we can actually pass along, but we know that we've had quite a few thunderstorms developing southward. The rotation of this system is producing, as I mentioned, winds in excess of 100 miles per hour, and it has been nearly stationary here for at least the last 15 minutes or so. It moved right over the pavilion and then kind of walked its way back out over the ocean before becoming stationary, and it continues to spin right along the immediate coast down near 2nd Avenue South. So if you're anywhere around that area, make sure you take cover immediately. And what I mean by that is to get to the lowest floor possible, usually into uh, a closet or a bathroom away from windows. Now, if you're in some of the hotels around here, your best bet is to get as far down as you possibly can into the lobby, away from windows, get away from those windows on those upper floors. That is the most dangerous part of a tornado is debris that can come through a glass. All right, so remember that. Tornado warning is in effect for that area. There is no question about that with these very strong winds and the tornado still hovering there. It has not changed very much at all in the last 15 to 20 minutes, as I mentioned, just basically sitting there and doing nothing but uh, ripping up quite a bit. We've seen a lot of debris with this particular tornado as well, so no doubt there is damage being done on the south end of the Strand right now, roughly around 2nd Avenue South. We're getting a tremendous amount of lightning here at the Myrtle Beach Pavilion, which is literally only about a half a mile north of there. The winds are incredibly strong as well, I would estimate right now, up near 40 and 50 miles per hour, and even stronger as you get closer and closer to that tornado. I'll be honest with you folks, it's very difficult for me to see what's going on with a lot of the power out, but looking through this picture here, you can see it just meandering or being, being very stationary right over the 2nd Avenue South Pier. So once again, Allison, we do have a tornado warning in effect, and I want to repeat to everybody who is in this general area, get downstairs, cover your head, stay away from windows. This is a full-fledged tornado now right along the immediate coast. Now, Ed, we have heard... Ed, we have heard that there are uh, there is also one tornado or water spout in on Long Restaurant Row and two in Myrtle Beach. Is that correct? Are that you... that very well could be the case. These are very strong thunderstorms, and because of the direction they're moving out over the ocean, uh, the amount of shear involved with these systems is producing these small tornadoes anywhere from Second Avenue South all the way up to North Myrtle Beach. We had unconfirmed reports earlier, just about 15 to 20 minutes ago, that we may have had 80 mile per hour winds that had snapped some poles, and it wouldn't surprise me if indeed it was uh, some of these small tornadoes that are rotating along the immediate coast right now. So no matter where you are along the Grand Strand, Allison, your best bet right now is to get into the smallest room possible on the lowest floor, away from as many windows as you can. Nine out of ten people that are in injured in a tornado are injured from the flying debris that comes through glass. So please, folks, take the warning seriously and get to where you need to be until we know for sure that these have died out or moved on out to sea. And it may be a while, as you can tell here, with these particular storms. Ed, we're also obviously seeing a lot of lightning. We can see it there and we can hear the thunder mm -hmm. and see the rain. How about hail? Have we had any reports of, of major hail? We have not had any many major reports of hail, but uh, quite frankly, that's the least of our worries at this point in time. Damage uh, can be done with hail, but we're talking about the possibility of lives being lost if people don't heed these warnings and make sure and get out of the uh, way of this particular tornado. Again, a tornado, whether it's a weak one or a strong one, produces unbelievable winds that can do a tremendous amount of damage not only to property but to life as well. And it is just a madhouse down here along the boulevard. They cleared the beaches out very quickly. People were running from the beaches away from the park. This went directly over the Myrtle Beach Pavilion in its weaker stages. We haven't had any confirmations of injuries or anything like that in the park, but we are checking with the pavilion folks here right now, and uh, they'll let us know if anything has come of that. So this actually did start as a water spout and then came ashore. Exactly. It was a water spout uh, right along the immediate coast, just out over the ocean. It actually circled in behind the attic, came right over Ripley's, believe it or not, then right over the pavilion, headed southward. And for a time there, we actually had two water spouts, uh, what we like to call sister tornadoes, if you will, 
that were hovering one over the ocean, one over land. And then they kind of came together as one big tornado located over 2nd Avenue uh, Pier. And you can see these storms as they're building southward. It looks like, and it's very difficult for me to see, I'll be very honest with you, it looks like with that rain shaft moving southward, the tornadoes are likely going to be moving south and southeastward as well. So anywhere from 2nd Avenue south all the way to the south end of Myrtle Beach includes Surfside, Garden City, you need to be on the lookout for these particular storms. They're very, very dangerous. Tornadoes are nothing to mess with. No matter where you are along the Grand Strand, you'd much rather be safe than sorry right now. Get to those safe spots in your house. That is your best bet. Again, tell us what to do. Uh, if you are in the path of one of these storms, Ed. All right. Even if you're not sure if you're in the path of the storm, you need to make sure you're very cautious at this point in time. And your best bet, get to the lowest floor possible. I know some of you may be in hotel rooms right now wondering, what do I do? I can't go any lower than where I am right now. You can. Get to the lobby. Get to a room, a closet, a maintenance uh, shack, or whatever it may be out there. Get to one of those immediately. Stay there until we know for sure well, the hotel officials have told you for sure that there is no longer a threat with this particular system. All right, once again, if you are in any kind of a building that has more than one story, go to the lowest floor possible. Stay away from all windows. If you have a choice of a place to go, a bathroom or a closet is the safest place to be. And I'll be honest with you folks, if you get to those places, the chances of you getting hurt in a tornado are very, very rare. So follow that warning right now and, and do as I'm telling you, please. And what about, obviously don't go outside to try to take a look at what's going on? No, most people that are hurt in tornadoes in addition to flying glass, a lot of people are hurt because they want to view the tornado. Don't do that. Flying debris from these storms can, can basically throw pieces of wood and just about anything else at over 100 miles per hour, and that hitting a human body can be deadly. Uh, we do have crews on the scene uh, for, for this, and we'll bring you the pictures, so you don't need to go outside to, to see what's going on. Absolutely right about that. And as you can see, Allison, it, it does appear from the monitor that I can see, and it's the only one still up here in the Weather Center. We're almost blind to everything that's going on to us. But with all the reports that we've had and my own visual, uh, my own uh, eyes have seen what's been going on. It's no doubt drifting southward right now. And as you mentioned a little while ago, we were talking about hail. We are now getting hail here at the Myrtle Beach, uh, at the Myrtle Beach Pavilion, just compounding things even more. Uh, as of right now, we've had no reports of any injuries uh, throughout the area. John Marlowe is joining me from the Myrtle Beach Pavilion. John, have you guys had any kind of uh, reports of injuries over at the pavilion? Nothing very serious as of right now. Are you telling me then that there may be some minor injuries from this particular system? All right, some very minor injuries have occurred here at the Myrtle Beach Pavilion, but uh, nothing major according to uh, John Marlowe, who works here at the Myrtle Beach Pavilion. Ed, how about damage? What does John have to say about damage? There? John, what about damage uh, over at the Myrtle Beach Pavilion? Anything major over there? Or? Okay. John's telling me that they've had some uh, umbrellas ripped up, some trash cans thrown around. But again, Allison, the, these two tornadoes, if you will, kind of came together. Uh, just south of the Myrtle Beach Pavilion. At first, it was just a weak water spout that was producing a lot of wind and a lot of rain, obviously. But as it moved uh, in combined with the other one, that's when it got really serious, and we saw the winds really increase. And that's when I saw the cloud of debris. And when we talk about debris, it's anything that's being picked up by the tornado. So we know that is drifting southward at this point in time. And these, these tornadoes do have very, very strong winds in them, don't they? Absolutely. Uh, wind speeds can be as slow as 72 miles per hour, which by itself can cause a lot of damage, or in some of the biggest tornadoes ever seen. They can be up over 300 miles per hour. Now, based on what I've seen here, there's no way this is an F3, an F4, or an F5 tornado. My uh, observations would say this is a fairly weak tornado, but I must stress, it's a tornado nonetheless. It can definitely do tons of damage. Think of the worst thunderstorms you've been in. Usually the winds are no higher than 75, 80 miles per hour. This particular tornado, as it moves southward, no doubt is producing winds of at least 100 miles per hour, perhaps even higher than that. And right now, we believe this system is moving south? Yeah, it looks like the storms are, are moving southward now because we've been seeing the thunderstorms building southward. It wasn't raining when the tornado actually came over us, uh, but now it's raining heavily. We've got pea-sized hail outside the weather center right now, and it continues to drift southward past 2nd Avenue South Pier, heading toward the general direction of Surfside. It's probably right along the immediate coast heading southward. So once again, if you're in Surfside, Garden City, south end of Myrtle Beach, even you folks in Myrtle's Inlet need to keep a very close eye on this as it continues to drift southward. And uh, we'll do the best we can to keep you updated with this. Yeah, keep, stay to the lowest point possible, right? Absolutely. The closer to the ground you are, the better. As long as you are at the lowest point, chances are good that nothing will happen to you. As you go upstairs, 
or to any other floor, the winds actually increase with the tornado. So the last thing you want to do is expose yourself to even stronger winds, which is certainly a possibility when you get to the second, third, and fourth floor because of the loss of friction, at least at the ground level here. We have trees. We have... Uh, buildings and many other things that help to slow the wind speed just a bit, uh, not allowing as much damage to occur.